When I got engaged on May 4th of 2021, my fiancé and I began planning our fall wedding immediately. I made a relatively short list of the things that were important to me, one of which was the grand arch I imagined us saying our vows under. We were married on my grandparents' property near Mount Hood, Oregon. In the back pasture, my dad had already built a wedding venue to host all of his four daughters' weddings. Our wedding was number three of four, held on the top of a hill, usually occupied by our grazing cows, crossed by the old Oregon Trail against a backdrop of Mount Hood and Evergreen Forest. To match this grand setting, I imagined a grand archway. My dad and I began the design process by discussing what type of arch I wanted and what designs and materials might work best. We talked first about building it out of wood to match the large logs that we had already used to construct many things at the wedding site. I knew I wanted an arch that was quite tall and ideally wide enough that a lot of our wedding party would be standing under it as well. Eventually, I started sketching designs in the shape of a gothic arch with a gentle curve ending in a point at the apex around 15 feet off the ground. It soon became obvious that this arch would be a joint metalworking project between me and my dad. We came up with this design together. My dad would engineer and form large pieces of square steel pipe into the arch shapes, and I would design and forge the decorative scroll work to connect them together. Since our machine shop didn't have the necessary machines to bend an arch like this, my dad rigged a temporary setup in the barnyard and did it there. When he was finished, it looked like this and all I had to do was weld it together at the top. He was also able to bend enough material for a single arch to stand on either side of the double one. This meant we were able to do a triple arch effect, which is just what I was hoping for. Next, I planned out the pattern of scrolls or swirls that I would use to fill in the space between the arches. This was my sketch, and I broke it down into components of one large scroll, one medium scroll, and several small scrolls. I measured and planned out the dimensions of each one so that I would have the proper amount to fill in the entire arch. The first step was to create a jig so that the large scrolls were exactly the dimensions that I needed them to be. This is the jig. I welded it onto a backing once I had it made, and unfortunately, Forging all those scrolls was so much work that I didn't get any footage of it, and I just got this one picture. But that pile should give you some idea of how much work it was, and if you're interested in how to form scrolls, I can cover that in later videos. Once all of those individual scrolls were done, it was time to weld them in place. The arches had to be clamped down to a frame to make sure they stayed flat, and the right distance from each other while I placed the design inside them. I just used small tack welds until I got all of the scrolls where I wanted them. In case I had to go back and change something, I didn't want to have to grind off huge amounts of material. And before anyone asks, yes, I'm wearing shorts while welding. It was hot. I don't recommend this. But I did not burn myself at this part. Actually, for a project like this, the bursts I'm using are so short that the sparks and the heat buildup is fairly minimal. I got the last of the scrolls welded on and the arch was now a single rigid piece that could be stood up or moved on its own. This was definitely a very exciting stage to see it all kind of come together and also to see how the design that I had drawn would fit into a real life curved arch frame. Now that the arch was an arch with scroll work in it, next was the finishing piece at the top of the arch. I chose this Celtic knot pattern to symbolize the strength of an oak tree, endurance, and protection for our marriage. From these various designs, I selected a pattern that looked like it would be possible to forge and then started devising a strategy for how I would do it. First, I drew the entire knot to scale and then I divided it into quarters, also drawn to scale, to fit perfectly together within the top of my arch. Once I had done this, I had to figure out how I was going to forge each individual piece out of a piece of bar stock that was half inch wide by a quarter inch thick. 
This was probably the most challenging part of the entire arch process, but with some trial and error, I was able to devise a system to make the most important bends first, set the dimension of the steel, create the loop, and then finagle the rest of the steel to weave through it the way it needed to. It took a lot of heats and a lot of double checking against my pattern to ensure these were coming out the exact right size, but when I had all four of them done, I arranged them in the proper pattern, trimmed and flattened the excess ends, and then tack welded them together along the backside. While it didn't end up perfectly symmetrical, every end did match up with its partner on the other corner, creating the illusion of one continuous piece of steel forming a Celtic knot. In addition, my dimensions stayed true, and the finished knot fit neatly inside the top of the arch. Once I had completed it and welded the whole thing together, I put it back in the forge to flatten it and even all of the knots. Then I polished the entire thing with a wire wheel and grinder, and it was ready to weld into the top of the arch. Once the Celtic knot was in, the only thing left to do was to clean and polish all of the welds and scale on the whole arch, and then spray it with about three coats of clear acrylic sealer to protect it from moisture. I also welded footings to the base to allow us to bolt it securely down. Oh, and here is your PSA not to grab steel in a blacksmith shop, even if it doesn't look like it's still hot. I did this while forging the Celtic knot, and it was definitely still visible the day of the wedding. Those more observant among you might notice that the final design does not perfectly match what I drew in my sketch. I omitted the leaves because I was short on time, and this placement of the scroll work just ended up looking and working better when I went to go weld it all together. But despite time constraints and wedding planning crunch time, it turned out beautifully, and I was so excited to see how it would look up at the wedding site. We carefully picked it up with the tractor and drove it through the field up into the wedding site area. At the site, we had two very large logs buried in the ground to serve as the base. Since there was a slight slope, we buried the logs first, ensured they were vertical, then drew a level line and carefully cut them to length. Once that was done, Dad carefully tapered them to fit the width of the bottom of the arch. We got the whole crew together for the install. Once the posts were set and prepped, it was time to lift the arch into place. My dad, brother-in-law, fiance, and brother all took turns hammering on the lag bolts so that they would be well in place and the arch would be in no danger of falling over. We repeated this process to install the outer two arches. These boulders and the concrete steps were also moved into place and built specifically for our wedding. At this point, there was only a day or two until the wedding itself. Our friends and family worked to put the finishing touches on the dais and the rest of the wedding site. It was finally done, the day of the wedding arrived, and the arch looked awesome.